The Minsky moment is characterized as a sharp drop in asset values that signals the end of a market cycle's boom phase. On the surface, it is a dull finance term coined by PIMCO's Paul McCulley in 1998 to explain the Russian financial crisis. But before you dismiss this video as a textbook economics lesson, consider this. The Minsky moment could have very well been become the defining term of our generation, a concept that could be used to define the current American economy's house of cards. In today's video, we examine whether this is exactly where we're headed and whether this term accurately describes our current economy. But first, if this is your first visit to our Smart Stocks Academy channel, please accept my warmest greetings. Hit the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell right next to it to be the first to know when a new video like this is released. So if you're ready, let's get to the video. According to Macaulay, a Minsky moment occurs after a lengthy period of consistent prosperity and wealth, a period of time that distorts risk perception and encourages investors to employ borrowed money rather than cash for what can only be defined as a sophisticated gambling. Look around and evaluate the facts, and you will notice that many of the characteristics associated with Minsky moments is present in our economy right now. The first qualifying requirement is really simple to identify and confirm. It is no secret that the stock market has been on a 13-year winning streak, with only two years throughout that time resulting in losses. Since 2009, the SP500 has increased by approximately 350% with only minor drawdowns. The US Federal Reserve, which established a policy of 0% interest and massive quantitative easing in order to effectively heal this country of recessions and depressions, made this period of opulence and boundless riches possible. However, just as alcohol numbs the ache, when you return to reality, the hangover sets in and anguish and suffering overwhelms the body. The economy follows the same logic. When the celebration ends, the suffering begins, and many people can see signals that the music is slowing down. The guests are leaving, and it is getting close to closing time. Currently, the Federal Reserve is out of ammunition, unable to decrease interest, and politically unable to print additional money. Meanwhile, the inflation has reached a 40-year high of 7.5%, and it appears that they are losing control. The next six months will be crucial for Jerome Powell, who is pleading for a soft landing. On television shows like CNBC, a number of specialists have expressed their concerns. Muhammad El Aryan recently made some jaw-dropping remarks about Fed policy and why he believes that they may have lost the narrative with investors who believe the Fed is panicking. Give it a listen. We're doing QE with inflation at 7.5%. Now, I don't know whether you think they will, turn around at 3 p.m. Eastern later this afternoon and say, you know what, we're just going to stop QE now. Do you think they should? I don't, and I don't think they should do an inter-meeting um, hike, not because I don't think they are way behind on policy. They are so far behind, John. I don't remember a central bank being so far behind. You know, I, I warned that this was going to be one of the biggest policy errors. It certainly was one of the biggest inflation miscalls in the history of the Fed. And unfortunately, my nightmare is playing out. I wouldn't do a, a inter uh, meeting. I wouldn't um, not announce the balance sheet. I wouldn't stop QE suddenly. They should have done that much early. If they do it now, the market will sense blood. They will sense that the Fed is panicking. Um, the Fed has to do three things really quickly. It has to regain control of the inflation narrative. They have to be very straightforward, explain to us why they were so wrong and why we can now believe the inflation forecast. Two, they have to regain control of the policy um, narrative. They have to give us some sort of sense of what the soft landing looks like. And then three, importantly, they also have to show a lot more humility. Al Arian uses the term soft landing to warn Powell that he needs to tighten quickly without spooking the markets, which is much tougher said than done. The realization that a Minsky moment is approaching has now taken over the investment world. We discussed how a lengthy period of sustained euphoric growth is one of the factors required for such an event, but there is a second requirement, 
excessive borrowing. During bull markets, investors that engage in aggressive speculating often take on more credit risk. This simply implies borrowing money in order to make more money. To put it in another way, leverage. While leverage might help you out multiply your returns, it can also wipe you out if the market goes in the opposite direction. Following the Great Depression, there were strict rules restricting how much money could be borrowed to buy and sell securities. Big banks and institutions have created hundreds if not thousands of loopholes to get past these restrictions over time through lobbying and other means. The practice of borrowing large sums of money to buy stocks and derivatives has been commonplace. Consider this scenario. If a bank provided you with an infinite loan, you could go to your local casino, sit at the roulette wheel, and max bet every spin, doubling your stake for every loss. Then, you will soon understand that the martingale approach works if you have an unlimited amount of money. Instead, these institutions do it by using securities. They make enormous bets, and when they lose, instead of getting their margin called, they borrow billions of dollars and use it up to buy up the asset, driving its price up and preventing losses. The plan is doomed because one day, black will appear 10 times in a row, causing the line of credit to dry up, leaving you with massive losses. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger have been warning everyone about this heinous practice on Wall Street for years. They sat down for an exclusive conversation in 2020 and talked about the perils of leverage and how it has taken over today's markets. The people who are making money out of this unreasonable extension of credit argue for it and nobody's speaking against it. Now, and, the last and, time around, we got the correct regulation that came and stayed for a long time on margin debt, only because we had the worst depression in the history of the English-speaking world. That's what it took to get a little sense into the politicians. This time around, it just total return swap. So what fixes it, though? I mean, there have been suggestions that there needs to be well, more transparency, the, there needs to be a, a, really a crackdown on allowing people to lever up like this. What, the what's correct the answer? answer was never to have allowed most of the stuff to start. Well, but you allow idea. the wrong kind of stuff to start, and it runs on you. It is tough to be, very, very, very tough to be a regulator. To really go after the big stuff, you're attacking the profit center of institution after institution after institution. The prime brokerage thing, by its nature, means you're le you're specializing in lending, lending to the big swingers. And of course it's dangerous. And the th rules they violated, the same guy was getting four or five brokers at once, and of course he was buying stocks to keep them up to prevent margin calls. Once you start doing that, you're headed for an uh, ugly ending, and of course it happened. Do you think that it would take a systemic breakdown before changes would actually get implemented again, like you referenced with the Great Depression? The last time it took the worst depression in the English-speaking world in all history. That's what it took to get the last correction. So, returning to the Minsky moment, both variables are present. As previously stated, we've had a long period of exuberant expansion and a large amount of leveraged or borrowed money speculating. The only remaining uncertainty is when the tipping point will occur. Market crash predictions is a near impossible task that requires more luck than expertise. Many well known investors, such as Michael Burry and Jeremy Grantham, have slammed the markets and predicted the impending disaster. They have been wrong for over a year, and while the dangerous metrics they mentioned are flashing red, the stock market can stay irrational for longer than you can stay solvent. And with that, today's video comes to an end. If you haven't already, hit the like button below to show your love and support for this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button below and turning on the notification bell next to it to be the first to know when a new video is posted. Thank you for stopping by to watch and we hope you had a great time. We hope to see you again.